Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, do you need an aerated bottom drain? Are they worth the money? Can too much aeration be bad for your fish? So if you're new to the channel, we build and maintain ponds across Sussex, Surrey and Hampshire. Been doing it for about 15 years. Also studied three years of my life full time studying ichthyology. Worked fish farms, sea life centres, trout fisheries, trout farms, and pretty much all the um, local shops around here. Unfortunately, in this industry, there's a lot of bad advice. So just wanted to try and put a few things straight. At the same time, you can save you some money um, and also valuable time. Go into like aerated bottom drains and that sort of equipment. Now, if I was new to the industry and I went into a shop and they started to tell me of all the equipment you need just to keep koi carp, it would probably put me off. And I think it does put a lot of people off and it's a shame because they are actually really easy to look after and half the stuff is just manufacturers trying to sell their products. It is important to remember what type of fish we're actually trying to look after. The most common kept pond fish in the UK are your goldfish and your koi carp or carp. Goldfish and carp come from like stallwater ponds. I can certainly guarantee that you'll never find any of these fish living in a mountain stream. So if they don't live naturally in mountain streams, why on earth are people spending so much money to try and create that environment? Oxygen saturates in water, so it dissolves, it disappears, you can't see it. So just because you can't see the bubbles don't mean that the oxygen's not there. So when your pump and your filter is switched on, and it's circulating around the pond and going into your filter system, an unbelievable amount of aeration is happening in that filter system. So I know some filters are a little bit different, but majority of filters, there's a lot of splashing going around, there's a lot of movement going around, and that is where the water's been aerated. Now what happens, as soon as that aeration occurs, it saturates in the water, and then where does the water go after that? It goes into the pond. So your oxygen travels dissolved into the pond water. You don't have to have a pond full of bubbles for oxygen to be present in the water. So that's just happening all the time. So providing you've got a pump filter system running or even like a waterfall or something like that, I mean, you can just see it. As soon as the water tension is broken, oxygen will dissolve into the water. So as long as there's movement, water surface has been broken, oxygen is naturally dissolving into that water. So definitely filter systems, pipe work, returns, um, anywhere you can see lots of splashing going on, that's that's good stuff. That's where all the, the oxygen is now being saturated into the water and then it will travel into your pond through your pipe work. Okay, so it's also important to know of how oxygen levels are in warm water and how they are in cold water. So, start with cold water. Cold water holds so much oxygen. It holds so much more that in the winter you can switch your air pumps off even with a heavily stocked pond. Opposite in the summer, this is a problem. So in the summer, especially in um, koi ponds or just normal ponds or whatever most people generally have a lot of fish stock in those ponds so the oxygen levels will naturally drop over stock ponds especially this is a, a this is a um, big fish killer so it basically just a too many fish and there's not enough aeration so everything's because um, it's warm water fish are eating more the bacteria are you know needing more oxygen for themselves everything's needing more oxygen everything's more active so warmer months yes i would say you need to run an air pump if your filter system doesn't produce enough enough oxygen on its own but you don't need to put the air pump in the pond if you don't want to see the bubbles you can put the air pump in the filter and then like i said before that saturated oxygen will then travel back into the pond to the fish the only thing i i struggle with is 
some things I just don't think are needed for keeping those types of fish. So give you an example. So some ponds may have like two or three aerated bottom drains. So there's like three air pumps running those or whatever. So it's a, it's a massive amount of aeration going in already. And then if you go into the filter room, they have like some backy showers um, trickling down. So that's gen generally speaking, that's just a huge air pump on its own. Then they'll have a few drum filters or, or different other filter systems with say K1 media. And then there'll be like another air pump in there. And it's just over the top. That's what I find. Well, I just think sometimes a little bit over engineered and can cause you other problems. Gas bubble disease is an uncommon problem to have, but it's not saying that it won't happen. It's just something to be aware of. So if you have super saturated water and there's a change of say, a quick change of temperature or there may be like a malfunction in equipment which could alter the pressure of the water. Bubbles can occur in the fish's blood, you can even get in their eyes, etc. and can be a very quick death. The problem with that is is often misdiagnosed with another illness. So I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying that if you have koi carp, goldfish, there's no point in over aerating if they don't need it. They'd be absolutely fine without a lot of aeration, just sufficient amounts, and then it's, it rules out any other possible causes of other, say for instance, gas bubble disease, it's, it just makes sense. So if you're unsure, you can always test your water for oxygen levels. Ideal oxygen levels for carp, goldfish, that sort of thing, five milligrams per litre. You can buy little test kits or you can, you can actually buy like little probes you can put in the water and do a little test that way. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Like I said, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we really appreciate it and um, we do lots of videos like this like I say we're all trying to we're out here to help and um, show you different ways of doing things and generally save you some time and some money